First, the very different lifestyle of the Cape Buffalo as we take a Serengeti safari. The Cape Buffalo has one of the meanest expressions of any animal. As one old hunter put it, the buffalo looks as though it's just stolen your wallet or is planning to seduce your wife. Buffalo have a reputation for being highly dangerous and for attacking people, especially big game hunters. They're said to ambush their enemy, then toss them into the air with their horns and trample them to death. While hunters' tails should always be taken with a pinch of salt, make no mistake. These formidable animals will not hesitate to attack in defence of their own life or their young. Few predators will face half a ton of charging buffalo. The thing that's most feared about a buffalo is a hook from its horns, which, in the males, are joined to its skull by massive protective bosses. But it's hard to imagine that an animal which is closely related to domestic cattle can really be as dangerous as people make out. What's the truth about the Cape Buffalo, the big boss of the African savannah? Cape buffalo are found in Africa in a great range of habitats, living as high as 10,000 feet on mountains like Kilimanjaro in Tanzania and right down to sea level elsewhere. They're called the Cape buffalo because they were first recorded in the Cape region of South Africa, but they occur widely in central and southern parts of the continent. They can be found in the driest, dustiest conditions, so there must always be sufficient grazing and water close at hand. Cape buffalo almost certainly evolved in the forests and still like to use forest for shade and cover. But their home is increasingly the savanna plains, which provide the large quantities of grass which they need. Buffalo differ from almost all other plains animals in that they form large, compact herds. There's a very good reason for this. Though buffalo are very powerful animals, one buffalo on its own will seldom survive a determined attack by a pride of lions but in a herd, it can defend and be defended by the others. Buffalo cooperate with each other to great advantage. They can and will launch their own offensive against any pride that bothers them. The buffalo's lumbering but solid gait has little grace about it, but it's highly effective in establishing who's boss. Any pride in the herd's home range can be routed by the buffalo's cooperative action. If buffalo do catch up with a lion, they'll gore it with their horns, and many lions have met their deaths in this way. If humans harass buffalo, they may get the same treatment. But it must be said that buffalo meet out this sort of justice only if they feel threatened. For most of their time, they're more peaceful, grazing and ruminating like cattle. A herd of this size consume many tons of grass each day. Herds may be up to a thousand strong and consist of all ages and both sexes. Here, a large bull nuzzles a young cow. A bull's big bosses are almost like a helmet and have a central groove. A cow's horns appear to grow more from the sides of her head, and they don't develop such thick bosses or such a broad span later on. Like all buffalo, she has excellent hearing and eyesight. The many watchful eyes and ears in the herd help to make it a safe place, especially for the young calves. There's a great range of horn sizes in the herd. This cow has grown a set of unusual length, while another has very little at all.
probably due to some genetic defect. There's absolutely no doubt that amongst other factors, horns have evolved for self-defense. This female would be able to give an especially vicious hook. Large horns also give the owner high social status. Just after the rains of the wet season, there's a good growth of choice red oat grass, and the herds are in peak condition. Ahead of them is the rutting season, which, for the bulls, is a test of their considerable weight and strength. Outside the rut, many of the bulls spend time away from the main herds in bachelor groups, but move in as the cows come on heat. They smell the grass where cows have been lying. In response to the smell of estrus, the bulls curl back their lips in a gesture known as flamen. As an adaptation to grazing, instead of top teeth, buffalo have a pad of cartilage, just like domestic cattle. All the bulls keep an eye out for the main chance with a cow, and they establish a hierarchy. This is when the big bosses fight for the right to mate. keep fighting to a minimum, particularly large ones. In fact, most buffalo confrontations are usually limited to one titanic charge and head-on impact. The whole thing is resolved before the bulls have time to do each other any permanent damage. The big boss returns to patrol the cows. You can begin to see the vicious horn hooking in action as these two lower-ranking bulls fight. When a cow is at the height of estrus, she's sometimes pursued by a great stampede of excited young males, all jostling for position, though they're seldom successful. There are many attempts to mount the cow, but it's almost always the dominant bulls that successfully mate with her. Their strength and weight enable them to overpower the opposition, in some circumstances the cow as well. When the rut is over, many of the bulls leave the herds and form into small bachelor groups of their own. It's buffalo bachelors like this that can be dangerous. Because they're so few, their defense is limited, and to counteract this, they tend to be extremely irascible. It's no exaggeration to say that over the years, many hundreds of people have been charged and gored, sometimes fatally, after disturbing one of these cantankerous old bachelors, particularly those that have been previously injured. The oldest bulls that seldom return to the herd are sometimes responsible. They're vulnerable. This old male, past his prime, has already been attacked by a lion. Lions look for the weaker buffalo, especially those that stray from their groups. Surrounded by a pride of lions, a lone buffalo is in bad trouble, however strong he is. One pair of horns just isn't enough to defend himself, and he soon begins to give up, though the lions keep well away from the front end in case he tries to hook at them. It's only a matter of time before it's all over. The bull buffalo loses his life because he didn't stick with his group. The lions win their prize because they work together. 30% of adult buffalo die from lion predation, but it's usually those at a past breeding age 
and therefore not so important in terms of natural selection. Buffalo can live as long as 20 years, though they're not always completely unscathed. This well-wallowed specimen has shattered the hooks of his horns while fighting, but he's lost none of his vigour, and with his bosses intact, there's every chance that he'll compete successfully for mates in next year's rut. Maintaining his body fitness during the dry season ahead may be a problem. The savannah grasslands soon have to provide for hungry hordes of wildebeest. Over one million wildebeest migrate into this area of Kenya every year. Their goal is the massive crop of grass that the buffalo feed on. Not even a river crossing will stop the wildebeest in their endless search for new grazing. The arrival of the wildebeest migration is so sudden, it's as if the animals materialize out of nowhere. They almost seem to come up out of the depths of the earth itself. The buffalo watch uneasily as the columns of wildebeest come in. They'll soon have to search elsewhere for grazing. Within a few weeks, the multitude of wildebeest eat out the great crop of red oat grass. The buffalo herds begin to fragment and move away into the river valleys and the swamps. There is grass available here, but it's not so nutritious. Keeping cool is now high on the list of priorities, and the bulls in particular will spend hours wallowing. This is a bachelor group. The bulls cover themselves in thick mud to discourage ticks and biting flies. Bachelors often hold small territories during the dry season, which are sometimes marked by their wallows. These territories are their exclusive preserves, and outsiders intrude at their peril, though smaller creatures like geese are tolerated, of course. The bull's territory guarantees them a local supply of food. Meanwhile, the main herds are having a hard time of it. The pastures have been grazed to the ground by the wildebeest and scorched by the sun to the colour of a lion's skin. Buffalo can't tolerate heat as much as other plains animals. When their body temperature reaches 40 degrees centigrade, they're obliged to seek shade, often at other animals' expense. Buffalo endure the dry season as best they can. They conserve energy by moving about only when necessary and wait for the relief that the rains will bring. When the rains break, the harsh blue sky of the dry season gives way to towering banks of thunderclouds. The wildebeest have long departed to graze elsewhere, and the buffalo have this burgeoning sea of green to themselves. For the cows, the flush of grass signals the beginning of calving. The herds are large, and the buffalo pack close together so as to protect the new arrivals. Hyenas come from miles around to search for newborn calves lying in the grass. Most plains animals can run soon after birth, but a newly born buffalo is a gangly, ungainly thing, too weak and slow to escape from a predator. 
At first, it absolutely depends on its mother and her companions to defend it. To be safe, it must be within the herd. It takes the calves a few hours to recognize their mothers, and in the formative stages, they'll try almost any large object for a drink, including bull buffalo. Its mother is close by. She recognizes it by its scent and by its call, and it will soon learn to identify her by the same means. The hyenas look for some sign of weakness in the buffalo's defense. Their chance comes when the grazing herd moves on and a newly born calf and its mother are left behind. A buffalo mother is generally very capable of defending her calf, unless a whole pack of hyenas gang up together for a cooperative attack. She must get the calf on its feet and back to the herd, or at least close enough so that they'll come to the rescue. As she slowly approaches the herd, some of her companions realize what's going on. The hyenas now know they have little chance. With the two to defend the calf, it'll make it back to the sanctuary of the herd. Sometimes a sleeping calf wakes up to find its mother and the herd have drifted away without it, and it panics. Its distress call has a powerful effect, and the mother and her companions quickly escort the boisterous youngster back to safety. This calf has some illness and can barely keep up with its mother. A young female responds to the situation and comes into the defense. It's a comical act of bravery which ends with it rushing back to its mother to hide under her skirts. But it does show that buffalo learn to defend their fellows at quite an early age. Calves succumb to many diseases, including rinderpest, a virus which over the years has destroyed many buffalo and cattle herds in Africa. 50% or more of calves may die before they're a month old. The hyenas show little mercy, but the calf's mother will show even less if she catches up with them. Nearby, the hyenas have found a buffalo mother and her newborn calf all on their own. A lioness is homing in too. The predators and the odds are stacking up against this mother. She just can't be everywhere at once and the herd is hopelessly far away. She's doing everything in her power to keep them at bay when a big male lion arrives on the scene. 
The position is becoming desperate. Just as the lions close in for the kill, the herd begins to respond to the commotion. Reinforcements are on the way. The calf is still on its feet, but both male lions and the pride are here now. The second one has a badly injured hip. Three legs are barely enough to take him out of harm's way. The tables seem to be turning, but the lions will not give up, least of all the limping male. He's badly out of condition, desperate for food, and convinced that the calf is his one chance of a meal. His foolhardiness seems unstoppable, and in the remarkable scene that follows, he badly miscalculates. Somehow, he escapes being gored, but only by pure chance. Let's see the attack again. Watch that left hook go in and the half-ton buffalo knock him six feet sideways. And yet, by a miracle, the horn doesn't pierce him. Somehow he gets his claws up and manages to limp away. Equally miraculously, the calf seems to have survived the encounter too. In general, buffalo defense strategy works so well that predators have little impact on the buffalo's breeding success. But the buffalo's need to be in herds to defend themselves against predators does have its drawbacks. In the dry season, the large herds find it difficult to get enough to eat. This is the controlling factor, rather than the lions. Overall, the most important elements of the buffalo's success are their great size and strength, their ability to cooperate in herds, and their natural aggressiveness towards their enemies. Unless strongly provoked, the herds rarely show their aggressive side to humans and certainly never ambush them, as big game hunters have suggested. But a bachelor bull is very much a force to be reckoned with. If you surprise or threaten him, he will charge. The big boss may not be able to steal your wallet or seduce your wife, but he can still, on occasion, be one of the most dangerous animals in Africa. wildlife every weekday evening on five at 7.30. Tomorrow we're heading back to the plains for another Serengeti safari.